This is what you're going to build by the end of this video series. Welcome back to this series on how to build a Discord bot. This is the second video in the series. The previous video, if you missed it, you should go back and watch it. But where we left off with that one is we implemented a generic Discord bot that was able to successfully connect to a Discord server, listen to messages there, and then print those messages out in the bot's logs in the terminal there. What we're going to do in this video is a couple things. First of all, the bot we're building is a Wordle bot. Okay, so we need to know what a Wordle is. So if you don't know that, I'm going to do a very quick overview of what that is so that we can understand the functionality and logic that is needed to be able to parse the results from a Wordle that somebody might share in a Discord chat and then use that to determine winners who got the Wordle in the least amount of attempts. So let's first learn about what Wordle is in case you're not familiar. All right, so Wordle is a game that used to be built by an individual developer that was then later sold to the New York Times, and that's where people go to play it now. The idea behind it is, as you can see from the description here, is that you get six chances to guess a five letter word. It's a new word every 24 hours, and you get hints along the way. To understand that really quickly, we look at how to play. If you get a letter that's correctly in the right position for the word that it is for the day, it shows up in a green background. If the letter is in the word, but not in the correct position, it shows up in yellow background. And then if it's not in it at all to eliminate that letter, it shows up in gray. All right. And then when you go to play, this is how it works. So you put some letters in. I'm going to guess this full disclosure. I already know what the word is, but just to give you an example, there we go. Look, I got it right when it's completed. It says, oh, great. And you can sign up if you want, which I don't do, but you can also share it. And when you share it, that copies the results to the clipboard. And that's what people are going to put in the Discord server. So let me show you what that looks like really quick. So I'm here in my test Discord server in the Wordle channel, and I'm going to paste in the results from the Wordle. And we can see the format of it here. It starts off with Wordle and then which number Wordle that is. So in this case, this is Wordle number 1,271, and then the number of attempts that it took for me to complete this one. Now, this can range from one through six. And then if somebody fails it completely, it shows up as an X. So we need to take that into consideration because that's going to be used in the logic that we build out for the bot next. All right, we're back in our project. I'm using Visual Studio Code. Again, as a quick reminder, there is a GitHub repository that's going to be linked in the description below if you want to follow along step by step with what we're doing and use it as a reference. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the index.ts file that we created in the last video. And we're going to make changes here to the logic on how the bot is reading the messages in the Discord server. The first thing we want to do is we need a regular expression to go back to that original message that we had from the Wordle results that shows up Wordle number and then the number of attempts it took for them. And I've already done that for you. I used a little bit of AI, to be honest with you, to help me out here. And we're going to add this const in here. It's the Wordle regular expression pattern that we're going to have. Now, if we recall, just to kind of go through what this regular expression is essentially doing, it's searching for matches on Wordle, then the Wordle number, which can be a four digit number with a comma in there for the thousands. Sometimes I noticed that they'll have emojis in there for the celebrating certain milestones, like when it got to the thousandth Wordle and then the number of attempts it'll take followed by the slash six there. And then we ignore the rest of the results for this purposes here. So that's our Wordle regular expression pattern we're going to be searching for in the messages that are received via the Discord bot. Then from there, we're going to create a type. The type is called Wordle result. And that's going to help us capture the data we need for each Wordle result that we're parsing here. The Discord ID of the user that sent in that Wordle result, their Discord username, the game number of the Wordle that was parsed out, and the number of attempts that that user took on that particular game of Wordle. After that, we need to store the results from the various players when they share their results in the Discord channel. So we're going to do that in memory for now. And we're going to set up a variable called Wordle results, which is an array of that type that we just talked about and initialize it as an empty array for now. Now comes the fun part. We're going to add a function called parsed Wordle results. I'm going to drop that down here and paste it in and talk through what's happening. So this is the logic that we were talking about earlier. It's a function that's going to take in the discord message that was received by the bot when it was listening on this event message create, and it's going to parse out the username, the discord username, the ID, and then use that regular expression to see if the content within the message matches that pattern that we're looking for. And then we can parse that further. If we do find a match and that is not undefined, then we can pull out the game number replacing the comma 
so that it's just a normal number without any comma in there. And then the number of attempts that it took the user for that particular Wordle number. And then as a result, we'll return that object, which is the Wordle result type that we mentioned earlier, right there, like that one. And if we don't find anything, then we return undefined. Okay. And that's our logic to parse out the messages. So now let's start using that function. So we're going to move back up to when we received the message event from the discord bot. All right. So we're going to remove this console log that we were using previously for testing and paste in the code from the step-by-step -step guide repository. And let's talk through what's happening here. So first of all, we're going to start parsing the Wordle result in the message to see if it is indeed a message that contains a Wordle result. And if that is the case, this will not be undefined. It will be, it will have a value. And that's when we want to process it further. Otherwise we're going to log that the message and assume that it was just not intended for this Wordle bot. From there, we're going to implement two other functions. We want to process the latest Wordle result, and then we're going to process the current results. And what process latest Wordle result function is going to be responsible for is making sure we don't enter in duplicates and add new ones to that stored array in memory here for us. And then after that, this one process current results is going to help us determine who the winners are, right? How does that result and what message we should send in the discord in response to that new Wordle that was shared in the channel. Let's go implement these two functions now. All right, so let's take a look at what the first function is doing, process latest Wordle result. It's gonna take in the parsed Wordle and we're gonna check our existing Wordle results that were stored in memory here in the Wordle results array to see if that is already there because we don't wanna have any duplicates. Then we're gonna go and check the Wordle results and filter out to retrieve only the Wordles for the same game that this parsed Wordle is for that we're focusing on that one to help us in determining winners later on. Then we check if we did not find an existing result for the user, then that means we can add it, right? We can add it to the Wordle results array that we're storing in memory. And then we're gonna keep track of the scores for current game and add this one to it so that we can return that as well. And if it's already been added in terms of that Wordle that we just parsed, somebody's trying to duplicate that, then we're just gonna log out that, hey, it already exists so that we know and can keep track of that sort of thing. Now, going back up to where this is being used in the on message created event, we can see that the result of this function, it gets stored in the current results variable, which then gets passed into the process current results function along with the message that was originally received. So let's step through the logic on that. First, we're gonna check if the current results array, which is the one, you know, the one in memory has a length of greater than zero, right? Because it could be empty uh, when we first start. From there, we're gonna try and pull out the winners and we're gonna have a separate function that determines the winners for us. If the winners length array, so that's gonna be an array of Wordle results is greater than zero, meaning we have winners to report on, then we're gonna inform the latest Wordle results, essentially send a message to the Discord channel based on those results. Otherwise, if the current results is an empty array, we don't have any results to be processing. And if there's any error thrown, we catch that with the console error right there. All right, let's first implement the determine winners function here. So we'll add that down below, paste it in and talk through what's happening here. So we're going to take in the array of Wordle results, return back the Wordle results. Again, double checking that it's not an empty array or undefined. Then from there, we want to filter out any failed attempts. Remember the X's is an indication of somebody failing the filter, uh, failing the Wordle rather. That way we can only look at valid results that have integers as attempts for that. Uh, if the valid results is also a length of zero, we return an empty array as well, right? The idea here is we're going to return an array of Wordle results that are found to be winners. So now what we need to do is convert the attempts property to numbers because they're strings, and then we can compare based on that. Okay. So we go in for each one, we map the valid results, each result, we parse in the number of attempts here and make that an int and assign it to numeric attempts. And that's what we can use to compare against to determine who has the minimum number of attempts using the math min function right here, which is going to spread the results with numeric attempts by mapping to just the numeric attempts for each result that we have there. And we can figure out what the minimum number of attempts is. And then based on that, going back to the original valid results array from earlier, filter out any results that do not match the minimum number of attempts that we determine there right here. If they equal, then that means that player for that Wordle got the minimum number of attempts out of everybody that's played so far. And we return that array. And that is the determine winners function. Next up is the inform results function that we need to do. All right, so let's add the function for informing the latest results function here. And the idea behind this is 
when somebody submits their wordles and new results come in, we want to alert the people that have the minimum number of attempts that are winning compared to all the other players they're competing against. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get the Discord IDs from the winner's array based on that Discord ID right there. And then we're also going to get their tags. And the way you handle tags with the Discord bot is you use this syntax, this approach. You do angle brackets, so less than, at, then you pass in the Discord ID and then close that bracket or greater than symbol there. Okay. And that way it will, the bot, when it sends the message into the text channel, it will actually tag that user directly. Then we want to go and get the game number based on the game number we're processing here. And that's going to be part of the winner's array. We could just grab the first Wordle result from that and the game number property likely is not going to be undefined or anything like that. But just in case we have that there to indicate something went wrong and we can check back on that later if there were issues around that. Then we're going to determine the winning attempts. Uh, we want to make sure that the winning attempts does not equal the X again. We're doing just extra guard logic with that. And if that's the case, put it in as zero because maybe that's the best result that somebody has. Right. And then otherwise, we're going to parse the a number of attempts as ints again and mark that as the winning number of attempts that we'll use in the message that we inform with. Then we're going to also join the winner tags with a comma and a space. So it's nicely formatted in the message. And then we construct the text that we're going to use for the message here. We're going to say current winner and implementing an S in there. If it's more than one winner, depending on the winner's array length. All right. After that, we have the game number and we're going to set that to a locale string, which will essentially insert the comma back in place. So if it's a four digit Wordle number, we can handle that easily. And then we say with the number of winning attempts and then based on that, in case somebody wins it in one attempt, which is pretty rare, um, then it will either add the S in there in terms of whether it's one attempt or multiple attempts. And then after that, we have the colon and then we paste in the winner tags, as we mentioned before, which is going to be in that format using the discord ID that was captured from there. Now to send the message, this is the key point. So that was all the logic just to handle how we wanted to format the message in a nice way that it's easily readable to players that are playing Wordle. We, how do we send that message to the Discord channel? Well, we passed in the message object from the Discord SDK that we received. And on there, it has message.channel. So the channel that that message was in, we want to send the message back into that channel. And here is the contents of that message that we're going to send, which is the winner message we, just, we constructed just a moment ago. And we await for that because that's going to happen asynchronously. All right, so that completes the logic we need to implement to be able to read the Wordle, parse the Wordle messages, determine who the winners are, and then send the results back in a, as a message in the text channel on Discord. Now we can go and test it out. So let's get it running so we can actually do that. All right, so back in Visual Studio Code, we're going to open up the terminal and we're going to run bun run src index.ts. And there we go. It is running. So let's switch on over to the Discord server and test things out. All right, we're back over in the Discord server. I'm using my Clarkio test account and I'm going to paste in the results right here for this one. This is from an older one and hit enter. Now we can see it's working in that sense where it's saying the current winner for Wordle 1265 with five attempts is me and it did tag me. So now I'm going to go into my other account in that server and share results that actually beat that to test things out. So I'm going to paste it in over there and I'm just going to change the results to like two out of six and hit enter. And now we can see it changed in the sense that the current winner is me, my other account with two out of six, even though that's not really legitimate. So it's not a perfect bot. Let's put it that way. Okay. But it does the job. All right. So there we have it. We've successfully implemented the logic that we need for this Wordle bot to parse the Wordles and determine who the winners are for that particular game of Wordle. Now, one thing you might have noticed in this is that we're storing the Wordle results in a variable in memory. And as soon as we stop the bot from running locally, those results are going to go away. So we need something that's more persistent. And that's where we're going to get into the next video where we start using a database and tables and start storing the Wordle results in the database so that we have a more persistent and robust working bot. So stick around for that video. Be sure to click it down below or in the playlist, however you're watching this video series. But that does it for this video. I hope you got value out of it. And if you did, be sure to like it down below and share it with somebody who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy, safe coding, everyone. Thank you.